Michael, thanks very much for your time and uh, you've produced again another big report, the state of the metals engineering uh, industry for 2018 and 2019. Mm -hmm. What for you are the key takeaways from the analysis that you've done? The report, uh, what we found were the key takeaways is that the report is very important in that it gives you a historical perspective of the metals engineering sector. It gives you the contemporary issues, what are happening currently, and it gives you a way forward in, in what can happen within the industry. So it gives you highlight in dynamics of the industry, um, internal dynamics and external dynamics, dynamics that are concerned issues about production, capacity utilization, investment trends within the sector, demand, and it also gives you um, things that are happening externally within the sector. For example, the impact of uh, the domestic economy, the international economic environment on production and output within the sector. So these are very important factors. And of course, it gives you very important forecast for the sector. So it forecasts what is going to happen for the next financial year, which is also very important because it helps investors, both internal and external investors. It helps stakeholders within the sector to make key decisions. So it's a very important report to have. And when you looked at the information, we know that the metals and engineering subsector of manufacturing has had almost a lost decade in terms of very difficult conditions since the global financial crisis hit. What for you gives you some solace when you look at the information you've analysed? Well, when I looked at the, the information, um, I gained solace in the fact that companies are increasingly looking at exploring regional markets, the African markets, you know, we just going to conclude the African Continental Free Trade um, Area Agreement and uh, it's, it's, I mean, there's just a bit of um, completion to be done to that agreement and there's prospects because there's been forecast for various African countries to perform well in terms of their GDP and we all know that GDP is used as a proxy or a synonymous for market size. So the, 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 what came out very interesting is that most companies are looking at exploring regional markets, which is a very good thing because prior to this they were looking at regional markets that are further away from the country and with additional logistic costs. So what is happening, what is good is that they're looking at exploring regional markets, uh, which is closer to the country and also the fact that um, Increasingly, companies are also looking at trading uh, within the country too, which is something good. And are you seeing in the figures that the regional opportunity, the regional integration opportunity and the regional trade opportunity is actually showing through in the actual figures? Yeah, um, Africa is actually, um, in terms of export of, if you go for, if you were to drill down to the steel uh, products, you find that Africa is increasingly becoming very popular in terms of export. China is still the prime export destination in terms of steel, but Africa is improving. And in, when you look at the metals engineering cluster generally, Africa is a prime export destination. So it shows you, and it's been, it's been a trend that has been happening for the past two or three years, where there's been a structural shift to export to the regional African market. So but what, what is um, of concern is that the focus has been within um, the SADC and the SACO region. So we encourage more companies to trade out of the SADC region to go into other sub-Saharan African markets because that's where we think there's huge potential. And when you looked at the information this year, uh, what really was an area of concern for you? What was a worry and what is, I suppose, keeping the metals and engineering sector awake at night? Um, what was more of a concern, which I think is also a blessing if you look at, depends on how you look at it, um, is the fact that um, increasingly uh, companies were not were trading less within the economy. So I think it was due to the, the fact that we in a technical recession and domestic demand was practically very low. So most companies were not trading within the economy. So it's of concern, of course, because we expect um, uh, the fact that the metals and engineering cluster is a very strategic cluster of industries. We expect this industry to service local demand first before exporting. So that was a cause for concern. We were very hopeful that with the current uptick in, in um, demand, in domestic demand, in the form of improvement in GDP, and we're out of the technical recession, we expect that to filter through to, to the sector. If there's appropriate support, of course, for the sector, not just from the government, but from stakeholders within the industry. 
And how will you use the information that you've garnered and analysed in your interactions with your key partners in government and labour this year? Um, that's an interesting question. It's very important to ensure that when we interact with stakeholders, with government, with policy makers, we have evidence-based research. So we have facts, we have data to be able to show them when we take certain positions. For example, if we want to lobby the government to continue to engage the U.S. government to, to suspend the import tariffs uh, that have been imposed on steel and aluminum, we need to have facts, we need to have numbers to be able to show the trend that why, whereas the U.S. is saying that um, South African exports to its market, it's of concern to its economy, it's of danger to the U.S. economy. We can be able to show through numbers that that is not true. So it's important to have this. If we want to lobby with NESA, for example, against ESCOM's increase of electricity prices, we need to have the numbers. So it's very important to have this information because you have evidence and with this evidence you can be able to use in your lobbying, you know, advocacy. If you want to advocate for more support, more incentives for the industry and more decisions to be taken that can help companies to improve their bottom line, to improve on profit, you need to have the data, you need to have the information. You can't just base it on anecdotes, you know, and the data evidence is not enough. So you need to have this empirical primary data. So that's why this important, this uh, report is very important, not just for the industry, but also for lobbying, for advocacy, for consultation with government, with non-governmental organizations, with partner organizations, with the World Bank, with the IFC, it's very important. Okay. And then if you were to look at the uh, information and uh, were to say that you could tease one policy objective or one policy change that this information is pointing to, what would you say that would be? I think there's a need for more support for the industry and also for some sort of um, a mechanism to be put in place to be able to monitor designation and localization of product because all through our engagements with stakeholders, one key aspect that has come out has come out as a cause for concern is a matter of low demand. There's been low demand across the board, across all the subsectors of the of metals and engineering cluster. And we, we, we believe that if there's an increase in demand, it's going to filter down to the bottom line of most companies. Because even though production has been increasing, most businesses are complaining that they don't feel that in terms of profit. So we think that if there's a mechanism in place to be able to monitor um, designation, which is already in place, because most of the 19 or 20 or so products that have been designated have are from the metals and engineering cluster. So we think that if there's policy in place to be able to monitor this, to, to enforce it, it's going to really help. I know there's been discussions around um, on which organization, which institution can better monitor designation, you know, and whether it's the Auditor General or it's SARS, we need to have that in place to ensure that it happens. Because most of our, our members, our stakeholders, our membership, have complained, that, have complained that state owned enterprises and municipalities have blatantly ignored designation requirements. Most of them tend to import, you know, they want to import cheaper and maximize their profit. So it's a cause for concern. I think it's something that we're pushing. Another, another issue that came across, which I think is very important to highlight, is the fact that we need to ensure that all, all investments that are coming in, especially from China, from India, uh, we have the involvement of the local industry because we don't want investments that will come into the detriment or to the negligence of the local industry. And, and then it's got negative not on effect, not just on output, but on employment. I think it's something that we're trying to push through to ensure the sustainability of most of the, the businesses within the metals and engineering cluster.